Okay, so now that we've finished with the F69, we've got the block board, we've got it square decked, we've got the center line right where we want it. What we want to do now is finish the cylinder walls to the size for the pistons. So it's extremely critical, this next process. What this is going to entail is making sure the cross hatch angles, the surface finishes, all the things that are absolutely necessary for longevity of the engine are definitely going to happen in this operation. So uh, many shops uh, used to have uh, older equipment and some still do have the older equipment. Here at Chode Engineering Performance, we want to make sure that we made the best investment possible uh, for a a critical part of engine machining, such as honing, uh, we wanted to make sure that we had the best in technology. Now, we prefer Rottler, and that's the reason why we chose them, because of the technology that goes behind the equipment. It allows us to create a much, much better uh, end result, and thus a much better product for our customers. So with that said, we chose the Rottler H85AX, and this uh, machine allows us to do some things that the other ones didn't. What I love about this, this particular machine is that uh, it has an awesome interface here that gives us a lot of uh, versatility. So what we're able to do is dial in where used to, the old way of doing things, you might have to do by hand. What we can do now is put in the desired results uh, and get, get just the, the outcome that we're looking for. And uh, that's seen here on the display. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start this now. <clears throat> And as you can see it lower and behind me, what this will depict is actually the health of the cylinder wall. So this is going to allow us to see what's actually going on in the bore in real time as it's honing. Here you can actually see the hone going down and doing crash detection. This is really something that's, that's great when you get into blocks that might have main saddles that could be a problem. So as you can see the Rottler hone going up, inside, going up and down in the cylinder bore itself right now, you'll also be able to see this, this line right here. Now what that does is that gives us a representation of what the cylinder wall actually looks like in a profile view. You can see the 20, 40, 60 and so on percentage. What that is is the tightness of the bore. If we've got a tight spot, you can see that with a red line indicated there. Now the software in this, uh, this hone is smart enough to realize through amperage load the areas that need to be addressed more or honed out because of taper. Now what it'll do is whether it's a short stroke or a dwell, it'll do that completely automatically for us so that we don't have to do that by hand. What that does is gives us a consistent result every time. We don't have one day where the guy felt better, the operator felt better today than he does the, the next day or his mind might not necessarily be there. We can leave this up completely to the CNC equipment that we have so that we have a consistent result every engine, every time, and we have the proper clearances for the piston. But not only that, as you can see the load that's going up and down, what we also have here is as we go through the setup, it gives us a complete list of all the things that you would ever want uh, in the way of, of honing a cylinder wall. Now the two things that we're looking for is cylindricity and concentricity. Cylindricity would be the consistency from the beginning plane to the end plane. Where concentricity might be the consistency of the radius of the arc to the center of its circle. So basically what we're after is true and round of hold as we can possibly get. So what this page allows us to do is it allows us to adjust all the parameters that you'd ever want when actually uh, honing a cylinder wall. So we're two, looking for two basic things, cylindricity and concentricity. Cylindricity is much like a slinky. So from the beginning plane to the end plane, the consistency over that linear path is what you're looking for in cylindricity. Whereas concentricity might be the consistency of the arc around the center point of the circle itself or the radius of that arc. So what we're looking for is the round, the, the true and round hole as we can possibly achieve will aid and help us in creating a better uh, seal for the piston ring. And power and fuel economy, longevity, these are all things that are completely and totally dependent on that seal. In the diesel application, it's extremely critical because that seal is where we see a lot of combustion gases leak past. So a lot of guys ask us, how often should I change my oil? Well, one thing is, is the better the prep for the cylinder wall, the better the sealing ring. What you don't see as much of is the wash and the combustion gases entering into the, to the crankcase which will dilute the oil and cause lower bearing failure or it can be it can compromise the lower bearing area. So what we want to do is achieve the best seal possible and this allows us to do that. So also on this screen we can set up what we see as cross hatch angle here. It allows us to punch in a desired 
angle. Now what that angle does is it basically allows us to dictate the length or duration the oil will actually stay on the wall. It allows us to control the actual rotation of the ring. The steeper the, the cross hatch angle, the more rotation that we see from the ring. These things are extremely crucial when you're talking about oil consumption as well. Too flat of an area or cross hatch angle can lead to uh, more oil consumption, whereas too steep a cross hatch angle sometimes can lead to premature cylinder wear or premature ring wear. So it's extremely crucial that we're able to dictate this and hit that consistent number every single time. And Rottler allows us to do that. Being that the uh, purchase and the choice of a uh, home was so critical, we tried to weigh all the factors in that we could when making this selection because it is extremely, like we said, a vital and critical part of engine, engine machining and engine building. So one of the main factors that we were looking at uh, also is we wanted a vertical hone. The purpose of the vertical hone is so that actually all the motion is more of an axial motion instead of a rocker style motion. Now you can see this and this is a good representation or a good, uh, good example if you look at maybe a valve bridge uh, or the top of a valve stem on, on, a, uh, on a cylinder head. You see that the, uh, the wear is across the valve stem or across the, the valve bridge itself. And this is because of that rocker motion actually pushing out as it, uh, as it comes down. Much like the same way with the cylinders uh, that we see some of that banana shaping. So for this reason, we chose a vertical hone. Now there's also another added benefit to the vertical hone. Because of the uh, deceleration and acceleration uh, as the, the hone head starts and stops at the top and the bottom of the bore, you don't get the same crosshatch angle uh, between the middle of the cylinder and the top of the cylinder as you would with a vertical hone because of this reason. Much like the way that the piston would stop at the top of its bore and reverse direction, it's the same way as it does with the cylinder head hone. Now along with that, something else that we wanted to, to uh, make sure that we uh, we made an investment in was the roundness we've talked about, roundness and straightness of the cylinder walls themselves. Now one way that it, it's extremely critical to achieve a true round hole is by the, the amount of stones that are actually used on the hone head. Now as you can imagine, the more stones actually allows for a rounder hole. And the reason for this is because the contact area is greater on the cylinder wall. So you might think of this kind of like a bed of nails. Of course, we've all seen the trick where the guy lays on the bed of nails, somebody walks across him, and he's not impaled. He doesn't die, he lives, right? So we can kind of use that as an example for uh, what we're looking for in the cylinder wall and the stones. Basically, that's a good representation of what happens. The more contact area, it's spread over uh, more surface area, and it allows for that stone to make contact in more areas. It centers in the wall, and it allows for much more round hole. Um, we see a huge difference between a four stone to a six stone and as we go up in stones and we add more stones we get more round hole. Uh, this is the reason why we've chosen a uh, six stone uh, hone head for ours here at Chode Engineering Performance. The next thing that we were looking for, again we've talked about consistency between the different engines that we do. Now we do all types of engines here but the mainstay is definitely the power stroke that comes in the Duramax for us because we're obviously known for the diesel market. Now, one thing that's a little unique about uh, Duramaxes are that they use what's called induction hardening in the top of the cylinder walls. Now, anybody that's ever pulled a cylinder head off of a Duramax engine has instantly noticed there's a shading area. There's actually five layers of shading uh, on the top of that cylinder wall. Now, that changes the uh, hardness of the cylinder wall drastically so that the cylinder wall in the middle, the lower, is completely different in its hardness than that of the top of the cylinder wall. Now, the reason for this is because of thrust wear. The greatest amount of wear on the cylinder occurs at the top of the cylinder when the piston's actually changing directions and combustion takes place. It actually digs into the cylinder wall. So with the Duramax especially, it's, it's very critical that uh, for a round hole uh, over the roundness and the straightness of that, that we're able to uh, program the top and the bottom overstroke. So as that hone head comes and changes directions, obviously it's going to dwell more in those areas. Now, it's very problematic for some manufacturers of cylinder hones to be able to achieve this because the top is harder than the bottom itself, so we need to overstroke more at the top than actually we do at the bottom. So it's very hard for a lot of manufacturers to achieve this. With Rottler, it's no problem. Now, it's extremely critical that we're able to program a different overstroke at the top of the cylinder than at the bottom of the cylinder because of the hardness at the top of the cylinder through induction hardening. Now, with Rottler, it's very easy because we can go to our setups page here and it basically just asks us, what do we want for the, the upper overstroke versus the lower overstroke? Now, 
every cylinder is a little different, every engine's a little different. Once you dial that in and it's programmed, it's saved, and you can repeat this each time. If we weren't able to do this, what we would end up with is a tighter area or a tighter uh, cylinder at the top of the hole, at the top of the cylinder itself versus the bottom. And then what you would have is the, the contraction of the rings each time it's stroked. So this is no issue here. We can program whatever engines that we're running on. After we've dialed that in, we save our data, and then next time when we come through to do the same block, we can make that repeatable over and over and over again. It makes it extremely easy for the, the operator because the, whether you're having uh, one operator today or a different operator tomorrow, the program's saved, we can go to it, and we can have the same outcome over and over. Another feature that I love about the Rottler hone is the efficiency of it. While we're honing a block, we can be surfacing a cylinder head on our F69, or we can be running the seat and guide machine, or the guy can be doing any other task in the shop. Let me show you that with this page here. At bore locations, what we can basically do is just go in and center off in our setups page and zero off our X and Z axis. So once that's done and we've programmed what our bore locations are, in this case, on this engine, is four inch 565 thousandths. All we'll have to do after we've put in our desired results in the setups page, we'll just go to the operation page, hit cycle start, and it moves to the first location of the hole. It'll feed down and also has crash detection. Now crash detection is a wonderful feature because some blocks may wind up, if it's the first time that you program this block and you, your operator didn't catch it, they may not see that it would hit somewhere in contact in the bottom of the bore. So as it's feeding down right now, what it's looking for is any areas of any obstructions. If it sees this, it'll come out of the bore, retract the stones, and then alerts the operator. Now something else that we do here at Chode Engineering Performance is, again, keeping with the same concept of a straight round hole, what we want to do is make sure that it's not just straight and round in a static position. So what we're looking for is a dynamic position.